Welcome to the Windows and Computer Channel, and uh, this is to talk about um, Windows 7 end of support next month and a few questions that I've been having that are uh, kind of questions I have not answered uh, much. So um, a few things that uh, people have asked me um, about the Windows 7 end of support is... Once again, I'll, I'll say it again because a lot of you uh, that have been talking about it say, well, you know, is it, uh, is it okay if I continue running it without an internet connection? Absolutely, you're safe. As long as you don't, you know, plug in too many USB thumb drives that come from other computers connected to the internet. Um, of course, a offline Windows 7 PC will run forever. you got nothing to worry about. And you can leave that old Windows 7 PC doing whatever you need to do because, you know, of course, some of you have hardware or software that cannot be uh, moved on to Windows 10, so you can't really, you're stuck. You're stuck with Windows 7. Once again, remember that, um, you know, end of support means that you're not going to immediately be necessarily in trouble with security, but as time goes by, it's going to be worse. Because as time goes by, there's going to be more and more security flaws. And that means there are going to be more and more risks. One of the questions that's very popular, will you know, Google Chrome be updated for a long time after Windows 7 ends? Will Steam, will Steam still work on Windows 7? Will, you know, my favorite uh, updated software work for a long time? It is a case-by-case -case, uh, phenomena here. It's every company will decide when it's actually moving out of or not. Uh, so what's going to happen is that slowly as we move on next year, you'll start hearing some companies that say, okay, we're ending support for this software at this date. What drives the uh, support end for a software? Say, for example, a lot of you have been talking about Steam because you have games. Well, it all depends on the popularity of Windows 7 for the different things that you're going to do. So an example here is that we have an average number. You know, I, in, every month we look at how many people are still using uh, Windows 7, the market share, which is right now at 26, 27 percent. And uh, which is still a quarter of all the PCs, you know, it's still a big number. Um, but that number varies depending on the type of person you are. So, for example, um, if you look at the Steam statistics, they probably have a different stat. Maybe they have more Windows 7 PCs. Maybe they have less. So the statistic is different because maybe gamers have moved on to Windows 10 because they prefer that. Maybe not. It all is a question of stats, and Steam knows its statistics. It knows how many of you out there are still on Windows 7. And as long as it's a viable alternative, as long as it's being able to make money off of you know the Steam Store and so on, it's going to keep updating Windows 7 uh, app. So the Steam app is going to be updated regularly. But... It is a case-by-case case, uh, thing, and companies will slowly stop supporting their different apps that they update all the time. Uh, the Microsoft Security Essentials will stop working, so you'll need to move on to another antivirus if you want to have some form of protection. It could be a free antivirus. Once again, that's also a case-by-case. Case. I mean, um, you know, if you go to AVG, for example, uh, well... It's going to be supported for a certain time. Once again, it all has to do with how many people out there are, is, is it worth it to maintain? Because, you know, updating software costs money, and that money needs to come back. Nothing is free, even the free versions of software. So once that doesn't work anymore, well, of course, they stop updating it. So these are the little things that's going to happen. Um, some of you have been asking me about the Edge Chromium browser on Windows 7. From what I understand, it's not going to be updated and supported uh, past the January 14th uh, deadline, which is kind of funny because they made a version. So they actually invested in making a version for Windows 7, but it's kind of weird that 
I, I don't even understand why they did that, honestly. The uh, numbers, of course, every month we will talk about the numbers for Windows 7 out there. And we'll, of course, share all of the information. And we will, you know, have videos through the year when some major milestones are, um, you know, achieved. So if, if Steam announces a date when it stops on Windows 7, we'll talk about it. Uh, Chrome or whatever browser. The um, So, you know, at the beginning, a lot of these these programs and apps that you use will still continue to be updated. It's Windows itself at the core for security that won't be updated. A lot of you have been saying, um, what if I move to Windows 8.1 rather than Windows 10 because I don't like the two updates a year thing and blah, blah, blah. You could, absolutely. Windows 8.1 will be supported until 2023. Gives you three years. And that is a possibility. Absolutely. You, you, you could move on to Windows 8.1. The thing is, Windows 8.1 isn't free. So if you move on to Windows 8.1, you're, you, you'll have to pay a license for it. That is a thing. Um, where Windows 10 might still be free if your key or your product key is valid. Um, what if uh, some of you have talked about one alternative that I don't talk much here, but that is a valid alternative. Um, if you have an old PC, you're not sure Windows 10 will run on it. An alternative that you can actually get is, of course, you could dual boot with a Linux distro. Um, you know, there's always people out there that say, well, you know, this is easy to do. Keep in mind that 90% of the people watching videos or that stumble upon my channel here have very little knowledge of PCs. Installing Linux and downloading Linux and creating a Linux bootable device is a huge deal. And that a lot of people don't understand. You know, it's not because you understand it well that everybody around the world does. So, but for those that are technically a little more technically inclined, um, you could transform that PC into a dual boot machine. Have Windows 7 for whatever needs you have. And you could install, you know, uh, Linux Mint or Ubuntu or any distro that you like. Uh, and dual boot, so when you install with the um, Linux operating system, you're able to um, boot into one or the other. The uh, advantage, of course, is that you'll have a, a system in Linux that is updated and safe. So if you do uh, go, on the, go on the internet and do stuff, you'll be able to you know surf and, and do uh, things like that. One little word of caution about this is the fact that if your PC is really old, a lot of Linux distros don't actually play very well with older computers. Uh, there are lighter operating systems like, you know, um, Essentials. There's an Essential OS that is a Linux distro that is meant to be lighter. Uh, you could try that if you want. But um, there's, of course, that possibility of dual booting with a Linux distro, which means you hire a Windows 7 when you need to do your stuff with Windows and you are on Linux and can go on the internet and do stuff if you do not wish to move on. It's, it, it is a possibility. Um, somebody asked me, he says, well, you know, with Windows 7 demise, there's a big, 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 um, you know, people are all moving on to Linux because they don't want Windows 10. There's absolutely no statistics that show this. Everybody's moving ahead. Every Windows computer, the majority of them are moving ahead to Windows versions, Windows 8, Windows 10. Um, you know, we don't see a bump in Windows, uh, in, in Linux distro uh, adoption. Uh, it's staying around 2%, like it's been for the past 20 years. So uh, these are the uh, questions and answer for uh, Windows 7 users as we uh, the time, the clock is ticking for end of support next month. If you enjoy our videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching.